Jack, a long time ago, uh, mentioned, I mean, um, asked, or points out, you mentioned how Meldrum is more like Constable than the Boston School Impressionist. Would you kindly discuss the difference between Constable and the Impressionist? And I have to say, <laughs> I was, I've been hard pressed. This is a long time ago, Jack, <laughs> so my apologies. I've never been a fan of Constables, and I appreciate your putting me on to him uh, because a closer look really does, <laughs> it really does uh, pay off a little bit. You know, one of the things I try to do in painting is to, um, is to uh, allow myself the luxury of, 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 of uh, uh, choosing my friend, shall we say, in the world of painting. But it does, it does pay to look well. Uh, there's no question about that. But this is a, actually a categorical um, uh, uh, comparison. I mean, the Impressionist, the Constable thing, he, it's very light, logical to use him as a reference when you're talking about the history of Impressionism because of the way he's working, and I'm going to show you that. Um, I have a lot of slides, so let me just plow through them all, okay? So here's Constable, the ones you probably have seen and know. They're, you know, they're in some of the big museums, and, and um, I don't need to point out anything in particular about them. They strike you as being rather like a lot of other paintings of that era, especially the uh, Dutch. And, um, uh, but, and, well, and even to some small degree like Lorraine, who was the sort of the big hero of the, uh, of the uh, uh, landscape world, they're actually a little bit more like what happens with the, um, with the Barbizoners. So there's undoubtedly a line of thought there, since their dates aren't all that much different from each other. And I don't, I'm not showing you any of the Barbizon painters, uh, but there are some similarities, and especially when you think of Corot. Um, one of the things Meldrum talks about is Corot, and then he talks about Constable, and then he talks about Manet, and those are the three guys that he really seems to want to bring to your attention. And I think you'll be able to see why. I'm not going to show Constable, I mean Corot either. But the other reason that M uh, Meldrum likes him is here in this apparent quote from... Uh, uh, Constable, he says, landscape painting is scientific as well as poetic. Uh, so that's very Meldrum, you know, the science of appearances. Then he says, the imagination cannot alone produce art to bear comparison with reality. Uh, so he's talking about the need to actually be good at seeing the truth in front of you and hitting, and it's all, of course, in the body of that science, the relationships. And then he says, no great painter was ever self-taught. And um, that's, a, that's a, you know, it fits along with the idea that there are no prodigies in this art form. Uh, it takes too much unusual understanding for that to be, uh, uh, to be possible. Um, and there are other reasons um, which others have talked about. So this will give you another idea, though, about Constable. And these are the ones that sort of, if you see a bunch of his work, you start just pushing it away because it's not where you, you know, personally may be inclined to go. But this group of pictures, and then even more so this group of pictures, begin to show you uh, a way of making marks with mass that's very like Meldrum. But it's also the beginning of this tonal painting. And I don't mean tonalist in the tonalism sense, but the use of tone, value masses, and the... Uh, you know, in the pursuit of uh, the truth in front of you through the mass rather than through outlines. And so you can see those very readily, um, you know, that some of these, some of these things uh, resemble what Meldrum says he likes you to do, or has to do this rather fast and just sort of bang, bang the value relationships and um, plow through it. Uh, you know, you're, when you're doing this sort of thing, you're you only have the ability then to be really good at value relationships. You need to know what your lightest light is, and you need to, to then pay attention to the uh, contrast levels, the speed of contrast, your high, high contrast, and then lesser contrast, depending on where you happen to be going in a picture. So, and that's the sort of the substance of the visual impression. That's the stuff of the visual impression that we all know to be so. And uh, it's also sort of the uh, uh, methodology of... Um, of that painterly kind of painting. Duvenek in our country was uh, doing things rather like this, uh, more self-evidently like this. Uh, so um, these, and these two are, are uh, the, the bottom one I'm quite sure is also Constable's, the top one definitely is. But these things very strikingly resemble a bunch of that stuff being done off the uh, French coast, the French, the French um, 
uh, 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 early Impressionists and John Kind and, and uh, Boudin as well, who are the who are sort of Manet's leaders. But there's there are a number of uh, those guys that look just like this. So uh, and because they're doing the same thing, they're 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 building from masses with a full brush and they're hitting uh, chunks of paint and building on those in a very impressionist way. His uh, constable's big name friends were Lorraine, and who couldn't have loved Lorraine? Lorraine is really the father of, uh, in my view, the father of uh, luminous painting in, in America. Uh, he really is as luminous as any of those guys, I would say. Uh, certainly the model could have been a virtual uh, copy, a formulaic copy almost. The uh, Gainsborough was another one of his uh, uh, favorites. Uh, this is we're talking about Constable now. And again, you can see why that might be the case. You can also see their palettes are very similar, uh, which is, by the way, that is one of those things that I found off-putting about Constable was just his lack of color. I mean, but it's almost like you took a, an earth palette and, well, why do I say almost? That's probably exactly what they had and went out and tried to, uh, to, to make the light with that. And all you're left with to make the light with is values and edges. And so my guess is that that's what Meldrum was, uh, you know, he was admiring this as, 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 as a much simpler form than one that incorporated color, which when uh, Jack is asking about the difference between the Impressionists as they came along, well, you know it's the color portion that, that uh, Meldrum is um, different in, and, and so is Constable. doesn't mean their color relations are false or anything like that by any means. And Van Rysdale, who's always been a big, uh, who, of whom I've always been a big fan. I often use his work as examples of good composition. I wouldn't tell you these are four of the strongest <laughs> composed pictures, but um, but this is the Dutch, and of course a bunch of the uh, influence, like as I said, the John Kind and um, Boudin coming out of uh, Antwerp, you know, are uh, following uh, on the heels also of of, of, uh, of Van Rysdale. So that being that, now here's Man A, and you can see again that the chunks, the markings are really, really similar. He's, he's chunking paint on and building with it, chunking paint on and building with it. And I don't know that I need to say more. It's value. It's, and this guy gets some credit for being the father of the tonalists. Uh, I, I, these things, there's no fathers. These things come up. They grow up like plants. Um, um, you know, they grow up wild here and there and all over the place. Um, but, but nevertheless, you can begin to see the similarities and... Uh, and then interestingly, you get down to the bottom one on the right here and you start seeing some of the, some of the color of light that you then are seeing. Maybe that's now precisely the influence of Monet's experiments. But Man A is that person, as I said, that with Corot and uh, Constable make up uh, Meldrum's sort of pantheon of this way of painting. Here's John Kind. Now you can see the similarities. John Kind's got a one foot in a, you know a more finished look, but he still is operating from the impression from the from the fleck in the blob, and uh, and so I won't say more about that. But he was the um, forerunner, uh, the friend of uh, Boudin, mentor of, of Boudin, who was the mentor of uh, or one of those guys alongside alongside of which um, um, Monet painted. And you know where this is all heading. So there's, there's Boudin, and so you can see the beach notes and the simplicity of it. It's very similar um, to the, uh, you know, this, the, the left middle one in particular. It's very similar to the, um, to the one by Constable. But this is that body of thinking that's similar, and it's a version of, um, it's a version of, of Impressionism. It's a, it is Impressionism in the sense that it's not attempting to draw lines around objects. It's so strong shapes, the shapes of the darks, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, and actually in the process, you know, in the, in, 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 it's a process of, of building up, as I said. Um, that's actually kind of the thing you have to do when you're, uh, you know, whatever you adopt, you really have to find your best methods. And uh, for your own personal, uh, you know, you have to, you have to actually formulate a, a best method for yourself to get the uh, qualities you want in a picture. So here's Monet, and you can see, uh, you know, how is that any different from what uh, those thrown together sort of looking things of, of constables are. And that's really true of all these things. 
So it wasn't so much that he's he's throwing them together and b- being sketchy as much as he's got an exploratory approach. And it's certainly part of the reality of these guys is that they're living in a world that's changing, it's shifting. So uh, uh, in other words, they have to paint fast rather. So making the marks, getting in, getting out. But Monet is the, then moves over um, to this other Monet we know. Now, I'm just dropping back for a second to mention Velazquez, and that's the, um, the, uh, the other Impressionist, if you want to put it that way. And, um, uh, the, and of course, what some people would like to think of as the father of Impressionism, and there's no reason for us to say it otherwise for the moment. But, uh, but you can see the same pursuit rather here where he's not drawing leaves at all, and uh, you can see him essentially working by the spot. He's not drawing an outline of people, and he's working from, from reading areas comparatively, more reading in some places, less reading in others, and these aren't worked up pictures, they rather look like. They look like they're in the category of, of, a, of, a, of a constable in the sense that they have a sense of being rather unfinished. Uh, the argument is made, of course, that unfinished look is partially gives you, I don't mean the unfinishedness in a, in a self-conscious way, but it does give you a sense of life that you might otherwise not be able to uh, get. Um, in a noodled up hard picture where every, every little thing is noodled up and it just begins to look like the world is stuck, you know? <laughs> that's one of the problems of the, uh, of the realist. Um, there's a sense of life that's, that's, that's actually pulled away from you the more real you get. So here you see Monet actually now, and this is where the difference is starting to come in, but that's where you see the significant growth of, 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 uh, of the palette. The palette starts becoming red, yellow, and blue, more overtly uh, uh, chromatic notes uh, uh, co-mixed, co-mingled in such a way that they can produce neutrals but stay, maintain this vibrancy, and that sort of thing. Uh, particularly, particularly on these two on the right, these, these are still similar. I think that was the same on, as the one on the, left, on the last slide. But you can plainly see that this guy is, is into the nuanced study and I would suggest to you that's the biggest difference between Constable, who's doing these things, he's making the, the impression, but it doesn't seem to be a long-term impression. It doesn't seem to be a long study where Monet, even though they're 20-minute shots, will go out there over and over again looking to, to really research and to really mine the music of, uh, of color and light. And that's a difference that's, that holds over into the Boston School. So uh, the uh, top two pictures are Sargent. You can see the Sargent started out as one of those kinds of tonalists that we just referred to. These pictures, rather, both of these rather resemble, resemble uh, Constable and the earlier uh, and the you know, other offspring of the Constable world. Um, but that's because he's coming out basically of a tonalist thinking background, uh, depleted of color. And he also then goes and hangs out with Monet, whoops, <laughs> where he sees that... Um, where he's um, seeing the qualities that he's deficient in. Nobody could miss it. The, qu- the color of light, the full spectrum of light, and that sort of thing. Uh, Sargent always seemed to me to have one foot in both camps, um, where I think the Boston School actually was, was so dedicated to the search for color and the search for the deep magic that I think that differentiates them decidedly. I keep moving these too fast. Ay-yay-yay. Hey, All right. And this is the Boston School world. Um, here you have Vinton, the top two. And, and, uh, and then you have Wendell on the right, who uh, Wendell, Monet said, was the American with the best eye for, for color, I think is what he said. And, um, and there's Metcalf on the left down below. So you can see, if you're picturing the see pictures of all the other guys. Now, some people would argue that this is because you're in America and we have better, um, we have sunnier days. And some of that is true. I mean, in other words, we have so many more sunny days. Although if you're in New England, you, you sort of tend to doubt that. But, but it's evident when you're talking about Scotland or, um, or Ireland uh, that the, um, the, there's a need to paint a lot of gray day pictures just to keep painting your landscapes. So you won't get sunny effects. You'll do a lot of pictures that have no sunny effects. So those pictures by um, Constable that may be deficient in that way may be, in fact, not deficient at all. That's just the kind of day it is. One of my students, hi, Lindsay, uh, comes back with very beautiful renderings of those days, and I feel, I feel like, oh. And she's from there, so she actually loves it. 
and I'm, <laughs> and, I, and I'm not saying they're bad. I think they're good, actually. I think she's, she's, her seeing is really quite special. But um, it is the, the neighborhood, I think. <laughs> um, what did Stevens say? You know, the uh, landscape painter should paint where he comes from. And there's, so you have a feeling for that, right? So um, anyway, you can see again, the, the, search, the search for the full spectrum. It's, there's no more earth tones. I mean, they're, they're virtually all gone. I'm showing you here, Soroya, the two on the left are Soroya, um, and um, Zorn is on the right. And again with the Zorn, you can see that the orientation in the top of Soroya, you can see that the orientation is towards spots, spots of color values, in, and, um, um, and with heavy emphasis on the, getting the values right. But uh, yeah, this kind of a painting, you can't, the, the Zorn, you can't think, you can't think uh, like an outline painter and get this kind of a unique unity of effect, you're actually thinking effect and you're playing effects, one effect to the other. And I'm now talking about spots of light and that sort of thing. And that's that value totalist, if you want to call it that game, put down the spot and play the spots, get the spots talking to each other by their, just look at the amount of contrast here and this jump to your eye versus this one and versus this one, right? So you see the intensity of that jump over there. That's the visual order of the, um, you know, the, um, of the effects uh, by light. So this one projects much more to your eye uh, than the rest. And so it goes, right? So is that the, uh, oh, and this, so yeah, and then that's the Boston School guys uh, specifically. Uh, and these are all Bensons. And it's sort of disappointing to me. I'm, I'm not clear I know why these are coming out, <coughs> washed out looking. They're not in nature, not in person. So I must have gotten some bad shots here. But these are some of the same themes that you see Sargent painting, and Sargent is enormously effective with values and edges, uh, with what we might call the drawing portion of that, where Benson is now is, is also incorporating just that another level of color. There's, a, there's, an, there's an additional search. <coughs> ah, I forgot my water. Um, there's an additional search uh, for, uh, for levels of color. So... And that begins to be uh, the significant difference in the, the incorporation of the Monet thinking, you know, what you see and hear the broken color, broken chromas, broken uh, values when you need to be textured. Uh, and, um, but again, the, the, the same game with putting on spots of color and, um, and then drawing with them or using, drawing an element of them, uh, you know, we call it the drawing edge. So this is back to Meldrum again, and you can you can probably see uh, a, a difference. Do I have another one? Not yet. You you can probably see a difference. Um, and again, this is really good values work, but you can probably see what I'm talking about—the difference between what he's doing and and what uh, and what the Boston School guys are doing. But this is deep. This is deeply researched in the values way, and very and very conscientious uh, value and contrast uh, play. Uh, but not, it doesn't feel like, it feels like the color is more thought of as warm and cool than it does to be red, yellow, and blue. And so in that way, he's considerably more like Constable. And uh, so I think that's the story, Jack, and that's my sort of general review. Uh, do with that what you can. And, uh, and apologies for taking so long to get to it. Uh, now, uh, yeah, I'm stopping at that. Okay, thank you. Don't, don't forget to uh, comment, uh, subscribe, and uh, Lynn, what was the other one? Uh, share, and then, um, and then uh, donate if you can. It's much appreciated. My, my producer needs it. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much.